Yay. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, we're glad that you're here today on Wednesday, uh, Valentine's Day. And we have a special guest today. I'm so excited to hear from her. Um, and I think you're going to enjoy the message. We hope that you brought a buddy today. Today's a perfect day to bring a buddy. Um, it's the best way um, for us to make new friends is to put your contact info into the chat. Tell us where you're Zooming in from and how you serve your community. <clears throat> you want to hit the next slide? Thank you. Um, so we have three more days and we'll be meeting at noon. So today and then Thursday and Friday. Uh, try to come on live whenever you can. It's always better. More absorbs in when we're um, in the energy of the call. So try to join live. But the second best to keep up with the replays uh, as the days build on themselves. So there is a recording if you can't make it live. But try to get your homework done because the next class kind of builds on what you're doing at home and, and looking at your own cash flow. We'd love to help you do build a better cash flow and an extra stream of income. And we have daily prizes, but we need your full name uh, on your Zoom display so that we know who the winners are. And you have to stay and be present at the end of the call to win. And then every day that you're live on the call, you'll be entered in on the Friday challenge. So, I mean, the Friday prizes. So um, go ahead and put your names in there. And if you haven't joined the VIP, go ahead and uh, you can still do that and get access to the recordings even from previous months so we've been doing this i think this is will be our 12th month in a row so we're excited um that you're here and i get to introduce our host miss lisa williams and she will um tell you more about herself i'm gonna let her do the intro for herself thank right you now. june happy right. valentine's day by the way to everyone i don't know we were just talking earlier about some people have um, great memories of Valentine's Day. Some people have great feelings about Valentine's Day. I love Soma was sharing that she has she has great memories because of the the joy and the the celebration that her mom made of it. I was just at my Bible study this morning, and we all got these little hearts, and I wanted to remind you that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we talked about that in our Bible study today. We talked about how there's a lot of um, expectation around holidays like this, right? There's There can be a lot of hurt feelings. There can be a lot of disappointments. There can also be a lot of joy. And the great news is that whatever your story is, I can tell you with certainty that there is one Valentine that will never give up on you, that is always there for you, that has so many promises that he made just for you because you are his masterpiece. So I just want you to remember you always have a Valentine, whether you have a Valentine, physical Valentine or not, right? Um, we had some fun yesterday learning about our student loan forgiveness programs, our debt forgiveness programs, and I was curious, um, did anyone have some aha moments? Um, did anyone share the good news of the student loan workshop you know, that we hosted? Did anyone have anyone that they felt like they could help? Um, I know personally, I keep picking on Suzanne because she's been blowing my phone up. She actually had three different friends that she sent a text to and connected with me. Um, Suzanne, I don't know if they're if they have debt in their life or if they're just seeking more wisdom around their finances in their life. But my point is, um, great job being a good student, getting your homework done, sharing the good news of financial literacy. Um, you know, and I I had to share this funny meme because it just made me laugh. Um, I love The Office, and uh, this one just cracked me up today. Uh, so just a little chuckle for you guys. <laughs> Yes, we do have a date. We know it's February 14th and there's a lot of fun things going on on February 14th. So today we're going to um, start our day. Let's start our day as my favorite thing to do, which is let's have a de declaration of our, over our day. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to share my screen and on three, we're going to unmute 
and we're gonna make our declaration together, okay? On three, one, two, three. I declare, I declare, I have, I have great grace, grace in me today. today. I am full of power, I am full of power, power, power and amazing determination. determination. My face will be nothing I face will be too much every for me. Every obstacle, I will come up from every obstacle, obstacle. Every every obstacle. obstacle. Every obstacle. Every I'll ask every, every challenge, every challenge to come through every difficulty, and I will be better off. This is my declaration. It's so fun for me to get to know, there's so many new people that come into these workshops as June shared with you. Um, we, have, we have been part of the Pedro Adeo community for about a year and a half. And this community, we do what's called challenges. This is what this is, is a challenge, right? In our community, we actually committed to doing this for a year and then we committed to another year. So why am I telling you this? You know, there's some people that are here for the first time. There's some people that are religious. They come every single month. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you why we do this, um, you know, when you're learning something new, there's some powerful things that happen when it comes to raising your financial IQ. And I want to share a quote with you that is really powerful to me, written um, by one of my mentors, Ms. Sharon Lecter. And she talks about why adding money as a skill set to your life is so important. She talks about um, as parents, as grandparents, maybe we're just interested adults. It's up to us to make sure that our next generation are prepared. For the financial world they they're going to face because we all get to face it so some of you are are kind of still noodling on how can i how can i utilize this workshop how can i utilize it to expand my own economy right some of you are still thinking about well i'm not a marketer i've never been good in sales um and that that's really really important to understand that that is one skill set that you really don't have to have here. Now, what I will say is sharing the good news of financial literacy, sharing the good news of family, of, of the love of Jesus, whatever that is that you're sharing the good news of, um, that gets to be a skill set that you get to, to start to hone if you haven't already. Regardless of what you're doing in what economy you're working in, that is a that is um, a skill set you get to learn. And my my leadership team today, we had a very very powerful lesson that I wanted to share with you around compensation. Okay, and it was it was a lesson from one of the greats, Mr. Bob Proctor, and he talked about in this the law of compensation. What it clearly states is that the amount of money you earn will always, always, always be an exact ratio to three things, okay? What are those three things? Basically, the need for what you do, your personal ability to do it, and the difficulty there will be in replacing you, okay? So let's, let's break that down for a second because let me ask you, is there is there anyone on this call that doubts there is a need to raise our country's financial IQ? Does anyone doubt that? <laughs> right? Is there is there a tremendous need in our country to raise up more empowered next generation? Would we agree they're unfortunately not teaching our kids anything about how money works in school, right? So would you agree? that there is a need for what we do, right? There's a need for helping people get out of debt, maybe have better health insurance, be aware of tax credits. These are all some of the things that the Better Platform does in addition to the financial, financial IQ raising. So now the question is really, the one thing that we really can focus on, because obviously we already have a need, um, the really the big thing that we can focus is on, on our ability to do it, right? Our ability to do it. And that's why we do these workshops. We want to, we know there's a need. Um, we know there's never going to be enough of us to help with this need, but 
what we can focus is on is our ability to do that, right? So some of the ways that we do this, we do the workshop. June's going to share with us. Um, she's working on, she's our brilliant um, graphics person. We're going to share with you probably tomorrow, the, the one coming up in March. Um, something that we do in our community also is we have a, a weekly book club. So for those of you that are new to our community, we invite you. Um, we're tackling Sharon Lecter's book right now, How Money Works for Women. It's an incredible, um, you know, really incredible way that she's doing this because she's taking examples of women from the age of 19 until they're 80, basically, and saying, really, what should we be doing at these instrumental times in our life? So I, I want to invite you all. Um, this is something that's that we do on a weekly basis, and any and all of you are invited. Now that you've opted into our workshop, you'll get our reminders. And I want to encourage you to join us if this would support your financial goals. Having accountability together to actually implement the strategies in our personal life and work together to leverage this knowledge in expansion of our own business. That's really our key. So, you know, let's talk about why, why is there a need for what we do? I want to share with you some stats, just basic stats about the financial services world. Um, so the financial services world, first of all, it is the, the highest paid industry in the world outside of professional sports and entertainment, okay? And what's happening right now in our, in our economy is there's something called the biggest wealth transfer in the history of mankind. And it's because of this baby boomer population, right, that we have. What, what's interesting also is that very much um, what's very important to understand is just at the time when there's this great need, there's also a massive deficit in who can actually help people. OK, so I was a recruiter for 30 years in financial services before I owned my financial practice. And what's interesting is there is a massive deficit right now in licensed professionals in the U.S. OK, there's less than 300,000 licensed professionals in the entire U.S. in the time that the need is the greatest. Right now you combine professional development with financial services because really in a lot of ways what we what we're doing with people as financial coaches is we're empowering them we are coaching them we are helping them believe in themselves we're showing them tools and ways that they can they can help themselves right and so we know very well that the personal development space is also one of the most lucrative spaces in the world so you combine the two great needs of financial services with personal development. And then basically, what do you have? You have yourself and your ability to follow a system, right? So this is just one of, one of the ways that we're doing that in supporting people. We talked yesterday about some of the biggest problems, biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to building wealth. Um, we talked about, did anyone... Um, realize they maybe they're in the wrong cash flow quadrant. Did that resonate with anyone, right? We've we've been trading our time for money for a long, long time. That's how we're raised. You you go to school, you get a good job, right? Everything's gonna work out. So we know that we're many times we've been just in the wrong cash flow quadrant. Um, we talked about knowing our financial independence number. You know, if you haven't already, I encourage you um, schedule time with our team so that you can identify what that financial independence number is. We talked about the, the stock market yesterday and what it's been doing, um, how we can protect ourselves. Remember this, this little chart, the market's at an all time high right now. Um, so friends, when you, when you see this chart, I want you to be thinking about um, what do I have in my wealth bucket? What do my parents have in their wealth bucket? What do my children have? Are we protecting what we have? If we're able to protect it, that is the kingdom way to go about wealth building, my friends. Um, now, not everyone has wealth that they're building, that you know they're in the wealth building stage. But if you have wealth that you've already accumulated, 
and you are now aware of ways that you can protect it, why aren't you? That is a big, big question you get to answer yourself. A lot of times it's because we don't trust who we're getting advice from, right? Um, and so if you don't trust me, go and find other answers to help yourself because there is no need for our country to, to be devastated again by another loss like 2008. There's no need for it because there are products that will help protect families. I, am, I, I sleep so well at night because I know that when my clients are calling me, they are calling me to thank me. When the market dropped in 2022, my clients were calling me and saying, Lisa, thank you so much for letting me know about what's available. My friends are freaking out and I am sleeping well, right? They're not getting those statements like they were for a whole year in 2008, where there's a, a state just continued to plummet. So if you have this knowledge, every one of you, I'm talking to everyone that, that has wealth that you've already built at some time in your life, there is more that we can do to help you by protecting what you've built than actually growing more, okay? And that's part of the Kingdom Wealth formula is first protection first, then earn and multiply, okay? So definitely, if you haven't um, taken the time to schedule time with one of our coaches, make sure that you do that. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, investing. Okay. And let's, let's just agree. Would we agree that there are really only three ways to invest? Okay. Now, now most of us are aware of the first two, the fixed way. This is your savings account. We, we talked yesterday about getting a high yield savings account, at least do better with your emergency fund right now. Um, if you can, there's bonds, there's CDs, we agree that it's it's safe, but it's not very sexy. It's not going to help you actually build the wealth that will enable you to be financially free at some point, right? Then you have the variable market. This is the stock market. This is the crypto market. This is mutual funds. This is, uh, Nancy, we were talking earlier today about the options world, right? Um, it is very risky. You get to, you get to be really good students of what you're doing before you really start to invest. Doesn't that make logical sense? And yet, where do you suppose the majority of wealth is in our country? Where any raise of hands for where we think it is. Do we think it's in do we think it's in in the fixed accounts or do we think it's in variable? Would you agree most people are building their wealth in the variable space, right? It's what what's whatever companies are telling us. It's how the traditional financial services world teaches people, right? But how many of you are familiar with the indexing strategy? Raise up hands for those of you that have heard of this before. You're aware of what it is. Not a whole lot of people. Isn't that interesting? Because the indexing strategies have been around for a really long time decades, over a hundred years, by the way. Um, and yet so few people know about it. Okay. So the difference in variable versus indexing variable, you're going to ride the roller coaster of the market. Indexing, you will, you will go up when the market does well, but then if the market does poorly, you're going to go sideways. Okay. So it's more of a staircase approach to investing. And imagine just in your own world, what would have happened if you never lost what you had saved, okay? That that hard earned money that you have accumulated, imagine how much more you would have if you had never lost, okay? So you can't, you get to take a screenshot of this, you get to um, re remember that you do not have to lose, okay? You can't come back to us later when the market crashes and say, but Lisa, right? Why didn't you tell me? We, we told you, right? Now let's talk about taxes, okay? What, the number one killer of wealth, what would you say? Would you we agree is taxes? So let's just talk about which one of these sounds best, okay? Taxable, tax deferred, or tax advantage? Suzanne, which, which one sounds best to you, my dear? Tell me what, which one sounds best? The last one, tax advantage. The last one, absolutely. <laughs> it sounds really good to me too. You know, it's funny. Um, 
I had two financial advisors that I worked with for decades, okay? Do you know that they really didn't talk a lot about tax advantage to me, right? Taxable is, is what most of us are in, stocks, the crypto space. You know, you're always going to get that 1099 at the end of the year because Uncle Sam, our favorite Uncle Sam, he is always going to get his, his cut, right? Then you have tax deferred. Now, this is where the majority of people are building their wealth today. This is what I did for decades, by the way, before I knew better, right? I, I, I saved my money. I got a tax write-off in that year that I saved, and I pushed my taxes off until there was this big pile of money. But guess what? I haven't paid any taxes on this money yet. So tax advantage is taking advantage of what is happening in our economy right now. Would you be surprised to know that the tax rates are lower than they've ever been in the history of our lifetime right now? So doesn't it make sense to build wealth in a tax advantaged way? Tax advantage, there's really only two ways to do that. Um, raise of hands for those of you that are familiar with a Roth IRA. Familiar with a Roth? Most of us have at least heard about it, right? Um, but how many of you are familiar with indexing using cash value life insurance? Anyone familiar with that? Um, I know our students are, some of our students are. The benefit of this, my friends, it's called private placement life insurance. The benefit is that you can use that same indexing strategy that we talked about with the annuities yesterday, where you can protect your family. We always believe in protection first for your lifetime, but you can also make sure that they have a tax-free vehicle of wealth that they are le we're leaving to our legacy. Because, you know, here's the deal, the traditional financial advisors, what they do is they, they talk about, okay, you have to have this big bucket of money and then you have to use what's called the 4% rule. Has anyone ever heard of the 4% rule? This is, if you sit down with any financial advisor, they're going to talk about the 4% rule. What is the 4% rule? The 4% rule says that if as long as you take only 4% of your nest egg, right, and you use that for your income, then you're, that money will last your lifetime and you will have something to leave to the next generation. That's most people's desire is to, to be able to be comfortable while they're alive, but then also have something they can leave to the next generation, right? Now, the question is, if let's just say the average nest egg is a million dollars, what's 4% of a million dollars? Easy math, $40,000. Okay. So raise your hands for those of you that could live on $40,000, right? So you see that the math is broken, unfortunately, in this, this traditional financial services world. That's why we are so passionate about putting this education into your hands, my friend, so you can be better stewards of your money, right? You can learn about these concepts. With cash value life insurance, you can, it gives you a permission slip, really, in a lot of ways, to be able to spend your wealth because you have something that you are leaving to your family um, in the form of this death benefit, right? Because this is the way, the reality is, this is the way that, you know, let's say this box represents the US, okay? And that tiny little box is the 1% population. This is the group that is very wealthy. You know, they get calls from Morgan Stanley, from Merrill Lynch, you know, hey, let us buy you a steak dinner and show you how you can do even better with your money, right? The, unfortunately, the 990, they're either A, not doing anything, or they have a 401k or an IRA. And you think about this concept, the 401k, you cannot touch your own money until you're 59 and a half. You absolutely can lose and you still haven't paid your taxes yet right? So our goal is to share with everyone the good news of indexing, you know, cash value life insurance, what it, what it looks like to be able to sleep well at night, be able to get a good rate of return, not lose your money, and pay substantially lower taxes. Don't you think that everyone deserves to, to learn this information? Doesn't this, isn't this a crusade you can get excited about, 
right? No family left behind is our crusade. And it is a mighty one. We we are, you know, we're sharing this workshop with you to give you a taste and see of what we do as financial licensed coaches, because we need more people. Do we need more people doing good things, right? Um, tomorrow we are actually going to dive a little bit deeper into this really powerful concept of cash value life insurance. There's there's so many names that have been given for this concept. It's been around for over a hundred years. And guess what? It's not just for the wealthy. We we hear the story about the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. And there, these were two families, two of the, the wealthiest families in the world. And the Rockefellers are the fam are the family that implemented this strategy. Because what they what they knew they could do is they could always leave a legacy to the next generation, right? Then you incorporated education because the Rockefellers were really good about educating their next generation as well. Um, there's a lot of concepts, you know, names for this. There's infinite banking. There's the concept of be your own banker. They call it the rich man's Roth. You know, I it's crazy. I go on TikTok and I just had an appointment a couple months ago and she just she, uh, she just got on the phone and she said, Lisa, I I want one of those things I learned about on TikTok. You know, it's all over right now. So I just encourage you, you know, if this is a new concept for you, keep showing up here, you know, keep empowering yourself with knowledge. OK, so um, I want to I'm going to. I'm going to divert a little bit and we're going to go back to the better platform. Okay. So as you know, the better platform is a plug and play referral program. This is one of the, the things we've been teaching you all about. Um, yesterday we talked about the debt sector of um, prosperity called price prosperity financial. This is a way that if you know people that have, you know, student loan debt, if you know people that have credit card debt, I shared my own personal story of releasing 70,000 in credit card debt. You can be helping these families be, be um, by the relief of this debt burden, and you can get very, very well paid for those referrals. Today, we're gonna talk about um, how we are revolutionizing the health insurance industry. Um, now, this platform, this is a company called Clearwater that sits on our platform. Now, originally it was really designed for the independent workers um, and the companies that also have independent workers. Now it's gotten even bigger. We just launched another company that we're gonna be working with that now can offer full-fledged benefits to companies. Um, Eric, you were talking about your trucking company, you know, that you work, that you used to work with. This is gonna be such a way for you to share the good news of better, better health insurance for people. You know, they've revolutionized, the Better Platform has really revolutionized the, our most valuable thing, which is our personal network, the people that we know. And not only that, but they have unbelievably better benefits. Personally, I have experienced this story. Um, as, you know, as a well-paid entrepreneur, you are paying, if you're if you're working through the marketplace for your health insurance, you are paying through the nose. I was paying $1,900 a month for my family of five. It was a HMO that wasn't, I mean, it wasn't very good, quite frankly. And I saved $700 a month and I went to a PPO. What they've done is something really, really smart. Um, you know how the traditional health insurance there's basically, um, they lump the, the healthy 18-year-old in with the 88-year-old who has nine medications, right? And they lump us all together, and then they, they average out the cost, okay? So what Clearwater has done is they've segregated. It is, it is a benefits plan more for the healthy individuals. Um, it is a benefits plan more for, Donna, correct me if I'm wrong, is it 60 62 and below. Is that right? I can't remember exactly. Is it 65? I think that's right. Cause 62 is the Medicare number. Okay. Right. So it's, it's a great alternative before you hit the Medicare space. Now, obviously if you are, if you're um, maybe living, living below the means that you know, right now, maybe you are, you know, getting benefits right now that the affordable care act puts some great things in place for people 
that don't have a lot of means. But if you are someone that's earning a lot and you are on the open marketplace, you are paying a fortune. So I encourage you, um, share the good news. That Just to give you an idea, the average annual savings is about 8,000 a year. Mine was 700 a month, so that, that equates. You know, and really this, this, little, this little question here is a great way to share. If I could show you a way to cut your healthcare premiums by an average of 8,000 a year, at the same time, enhance your benefits, would that be something interesting to you? You know, this is just a, a quote from one of the scripts that the Better Platform offers us. Remember this week, all we have really time for is to give you a little taste and see of what, what these products and services do. Um, in order for you to get prepared to make a commitment to yourself to get to know the products personally, um, the great news is we don't have to be the experts because the companies that we work with are. As long as we know enough to tell people, you know, what's available to them. This is actually benefits that are available for businesses um, between 10 and 1,000. And now we have another company that offers benefits for as many employees as possible. Um, you know, usually with smaller companies, they might have some sort of health insurance and plan, you know, in place. They're, at, they're interested in adding benefits for their employees. Um, maybe they don't like their current health insurance company. That's a lot of a lot of companies out there. So, you know, one of the things that I love about Clearwater is um, one, one of the benefits you have as a better affiliate is you actually first can get your own health insurance. So if this is something that would benefit you, that's one of the things they'll ask you on your onboarding is, do you need health insurance? And they'll actually give you 20% off your own health insurance just by being an affiliate with, with the Better Platform. So um, make sure and check it out. You know, they they sit, the average residual commission per client is about $288 a year, which that can stack, stack up pretty quickly, right? We have, you know, we only launched the Better Platform um, in January of last year. And these are real live commissions and dollars that have been put back in our economy. You know, churches that are getting money back, companies that thought they were going to need to close their doors are getting ERC tax credits. We're going to learn a little bit more about that tomorrow. And um, I want to make sure that you know what's available to you. You know, we really want to be here as a resource for you whether it be um, a financial you know, education resource, whether you want to consult on, hey, do I have the, the, the right kind of insurance in place? Do I need to take a look at my personal investments? Can I, can I use a set of eyes on what I have in the market right now and explore ways to protect that? You know, We are offering a free no obligation appointment with our coaching team if you, if that resonates with you, if that's something that would support you. Um, and we also love to help you get started with your better business, right? If you need support with that as well, okay? So perfect timing for me to bring to the stage um, my friend Soma. So, you know, one of the things that I love most about what I do is all the interesting people that I get the blessing to meet. And I also love what one of the things I love most about, about Soma is how she is ever evolving. She is, she is very much someone that continues to, you know, she has this beautiful background. She she was a figure skater at one point, a champion figure skater. Um definitely used to like the world-class lifestyle, right? So you've been all over the world. We met um, through a mutual friend, which is always my very favorite way to meet people because I immediately just feel like I'm meeting a kindred spirit, right? And um, Soma and I bo both have been part of this Shanda Sumter community for quite some time. She also did a transformational leadership program like I did. So immediately she's up, she's raised in her street cred with me. Right, Soma, we know when we meet people that have done HCL, we're like, they've got some stick stick with itness, right? 
<laughs> so Soma, I'm going to bring you to the stage, hon, and I'm excited to learn from you myself. Um, I know that you have some thoughts about what we've been talking about this week and our own, you know, financial journey. And you have such a gift for connectedness and community. So I'm going to pass the baton to you, my dear. Thank you in advance. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really honored, excited to be here with you, Lisa, especially as I've said a few times, because you do have a unique audience in that it is really about being blessed. It is really about understanding the blessings that we have access to. And it is really good news that we can, can open, open that up. Um, I want to tell you a fun story, first of all. And this was when I was renewally on my path. I had a particular belief system and then I kind of faded away from that belief system and then it, it shifted. And in the middle of this shift, I was in a situation where um, and for the shortness of the time we have, um, the more elaborate story, if you ever get me one-on-one, -on -one, there are some fun points that I'll have to leave out here. But the short version of the story is that I had just learned that I had um, accrued $10,000. It was somewhere between ten and $12,000 in medical bills. And I thought I had insurance. I had spoken with my husband at the time about this. He said, I did, there was some things happening. And I went and did a series of really and like bone density and blood, things that I wouldn't have necessarily done had I not had insurance at this time. And when a few things blew up like a week or two later, and I, I realized that I did not have insurance, um, I panicked because I knew what this meant for me. And so I, at that time, was new on my, my, my new path of really connecting and shifting my idea or concept between prayer and meditation. And I was kind of melding the two together differently, more uniquely than I had done in the past. And I felt like they were very much one and the same. At times, it felt more of this vibration, and at times, it felt more of that. So I went into this space for a day or so, literally, because I had the time, and I started to journal. What's the problem? And the problem is I owe people money and I don't have a way of paying it. And I recognize, well, I don't. There's something that involves in the universe because I did do something. And, and again, trying to shorten this a little bit, I came to the awareness that there is a situation where people did work, people received stuff, and how can we make it fair on both sides? Because I'm willing to do anything. That's the vibe that I stayed in started to do some of what we refer to as the Sanskrit word pranayama. The, um, and it, it just means life force energy. So I started working with my life force energy. And I found a level of excitement or inspiration of, you don't know, but you're going to, something's going to happen. And I started to recognize that feeling of we manifest best, most effectively, when we're coming from a space of knowing or gratitude or love when we come from a space of oh my gosh i don't deserve oh my gosh i'm scared that literally physiologically we cannot prove this dulls our frequency so i was in this space of being excited about wow i can feel something's about to come over me i had a friend who was in the industry of um of healthcare and worked in hospitals and said I, for a friend, didn't mention that it was me, need some advice on how somebody would go through if they weren't able to pay a really large hospital bill. Like, what's going to happen to this person? She gave me a little bit of advice of who to call, contacted the person, and literally just authentically explained my situation. She said, you know, let me, let me get back to you. Called me back the next day and said, we can release $8,500 of this particular bill because we have an allotment that we set up for this and there are certain situations that, and you just coincidentally are the first in line for this particular thing. We haven't opened up this particular fund. Thank you very much. And for this other thing, I have an idea. I want you to call this facility. So I called this facility, explained to them who I was referred to. And she said, oh, I got a phone call about you. Tell me again what you do. And I started telling her about the breath techniques that I started learning and, um, and what I was doing with them and how I was working with athletes and really getting them to 
connect with their soul's purpose. And she said, yeah, we would love it if you would come in and create um, a class, a course and teach our staff and then incoming people and create kind of a training program. The short version of that story is not only did they wipe the rest of my bill, but I actually made money developed clients. So I, I love didn't this. Get, okay. I didn't I get have a to, check I for have it. To pause. I have to pause. Yes. yes, I have to, I want, I want you to be very, very aware of this story and the takeaways, because some of you said a couple of things that really struck me. First of all, that you, it, it seemed as though you went through a process where you just sort of took the problem and like put it on a table and it, it's just, it, this is the situation. It's not judgment against you your husband, whoever, you know, you just like, let's look at what we can do with this. And then you use your intuition, your, your persistency to be your own advocate by calling. And do you know, just those simple things right there. So it's so easy to do. And yes, why, why do you think so few people do it? Well, I have a motto that says, I don't know what's weirder how well it all works or the fact that we're not all doing it. <laughs> I love it. It's been an exciting space to be in. And I think what I've noticed, and this all happened between 2009, 11 ish. And I guess what made me feel really emotionally charged in an excited way about speaking is that I can look the camera in the eye and again, and, and confirm my little cliche model. I can't tell you how many times I have forgotten that, that own story that I lived through during that, you know, since then, and all of a sudden stuck drowning, splashing water going, what is that? It's going to happen. What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? Forgetting that it's all within me. And so I think that that element of environment and being in a community so that when you do have that moment of phone a friend I can say Lisa or mom or you know whoever I'm forgetting who I am right now I think that I'm broke I think that I don't have an idea I think that I'm unhealthy I think that whatever the story is and that's where the quote that Michael Strassner shared this morning if I may and I'll just kind of shorten it what which was um oh gosh wait a minute. sorry one moment it was it was phenomenal because his story what he said is if you don't have what you say you want you have something else and the something else you have is a story and that story becomes an excuse you enroll yourself and then you roll enroll others in that story so my story was I don't have the money. Here's why I had legitimate reason. I could enroll anybody that I wanted to and it would be a legit story, but it wasn't working for me and I didn't like that story. So I threw that story back, knew that I had that divine power. What Jesus referred to is it's not me that's doing the work. It's the power within me. Access it. Be still. That was just just flooding through me. And I have to give props to my mother because I did get my spirituality from my mother. I did get that gift of, I don't know how to help you right now. You go pray. <laughs> and it was sometimes the best advice in the world. And they're now oftentimes to this day when I'm flooded with tears and frustration. And she'll say, What can I do? And I'll pray. Pray. Send me because we do have the answer. So back to the cosmic science of breath work. And if it is inviting to you, I'm going to invite you into two simple little fun things that I would like to share with you because they're breath practices that to me, put me in connection with God. They put me in connection with my own div divinity and it can happen in 30 seconds, which is faster sometimes than a phone a friend. It's definitely faster than a Xanax. Um, it might tie with a shot of tequila because of how that would hit you, but that's not really where we want to go with this. So I'm just saying breath work works. And then you have access to the emotions. And we'll talk about the emotions and manifesting from there when we're done with this. So um, think about something that you have in your mind right now that can scare you. 
we're going to do a little, little fun exercise. Something that can scare you. You think about it for a second or two and you're like, yeah, I don't like that. I worry about that. Or yeah. And, and you might be really good, but still there can, there can be something. Maybe it's a, a philosophy in the world. Maybe it's something that's happening politically. Maybe it's, you know, it just for a moment, if you allowed yourself, you could get scared by that. You can kind of feel that sensation in, in your mind. So now go ahead and close your eyes and notice your breath. Notice the breathing. And take your breath and take one inhalation, but break it into seven tiny sips through your nose. So it will sound and feel like. That seventh sip, you sip in all the rest of the breath and then you immediately relax it out through the nose again. Uh, one exhale out, one inhale in, but broken into seven tiny sips. You're holding it just for a pause at the top and then immediately letting it go. We're not holding the breath for any extended length of time. I'm going to do this a few more rounds. So seven tiny sips with one inhalation in through the nose. And remember breathing in and out through the nose. Two more rounds, breathing it in. Last round. Seven is a very magical number in so many ways. Go ahead and breathe it in. Seven sips. Now let the breath resume to just a natural, normal, even flow. Come back to that thought that can sometimes concern you, scare you. And notice if you feel that you have a different quality of emotion as you revisit that. Not that it took you out before because I would imagine everybody here is aware of some of these skills, but just notice the difference that you feel. And all we did is what, I don't know, seven, eight rounds. This is a breath technique that you could do for three minutes, seven minutes. So again, just notice that quality that it shifted you to with just a few rounds. Now I'm inviting you to close your eyes again. And this time you get to be the dreamer, the imaginator, the what is it that you want in life? What is it that you see yourself creating and maybe go one notch further? I would love to create this. And maybe there's a tiny little story. If I could. But I'm not sure. Maybe like, what do you want to create? What goes just outside your comfort zone? If it's in a business and you're making $10,000 a month, maybe it's $100,000 a month. Maybe it's a million dollars a month. If you have a relationship and you're improving the, the quality of conversation, maybe from three arguments a month, you're narrowing it down to one argument every two months. Go just beyond what you feel comfortable with. Hold that thought in your mind. Feel a smile through the eyes. Think about why, why you want that. Just be on that side. What, what, what is it? What would the quality of your life be like? Imagine it. Feel it in your elbows. Feel it in your mind. Feel it in your toes. What would the quality of your life be like if you were to create that one thing that seems just beyond what you see is likely in the here and now. So keeping the eyes closed, now we're going to have the breath draw out through the nose with a sharp exhale, and the inhale happens naturally. So the eyes are closed, and you're going to breathe out only through the nose. The navel snaps in toward the the spine, and the lips are closed, and you only breathe out sharply through the nose. This is also called skull cleansing breath. And it's like we're getting rid of the toxicity that prevents us from seeing a bigger picture. We won't be here long. Stay there with the lips closed, the exhale forcefully happening 
through the nose. And then while you're doing that, feel that space of imagination of what if you did do that one thing? What if there's something you're not aware of yet? What if you don't have information that you're going to learn this afternoon or next week that's actually going to make something so simple? It was just necessary for you to feel the possibility in your body. Stay with the breath of fire a little bit longer. Now inhale through the nose, hold the breath in gently. And as you hold the breath in, picture that image again in your mind and feel softness in your eyes, like you're smiling in your eyes. Hold it there just a moment. See it as though it's already done. It's already complete. It's already happened. And then exhale. Breathe naturally. Scan your body. Scan your shoulders, your belly, the tongue in your throat. Just scan your whole sense of being right now. And then as you flutter your eyes open, looking down at your hands and your thighs, coming back into the space and taking a moment to yourself. And I'm going to invite you to be a little bit bold. And if you had some form of a revelation or something that just kind of, wow, I didn't, I've never, you know, something, type snap in the comment box. You don't have to share what it was, just snap. Something went off for me. That's kind of my thing. And then at the right time, as Lisa chooses to open up the space, I am curious with what your experience is with really taking these ancient tools that are so old, they're like recycled old decades of bell bottoms and glitter. They're coming back around. They've never gone out of style. We have access to this wisdom, God, spirit at any time. I did some different breath styles that I wanted to be maybe something unique. You might've done the breath of fire before, but unlikely Prakasha. And they can be more in depth or less in depth. And I worked with some really um, more easeful techniques with my father prior to him passing. He had Parkinson's in the end. And we really worked a lot with the cognitive breathing tools. When you feel that the mind starts to walk away, as the ego say, don't let the sound of your own wheels make you crazy. The pranayama practice can pull you back in and remind you, hey, just because it isn't happening doesn't mean it's not on its way. I love that so much. Soma, that was such a gift for me. I, I, I find it very interesting how, and I remember you and I talked about this when we first met, how the world has clouded the benefits sometimes of these deep soul for practices. You know, I, I remember when I first talked to you and I just searched on it again, it, it talked about, did Jesus meditate? you know, and as, as followers, we strive to be more like him and he absolutely did, you know, how, how different is praying and meditating, right? Is it really that different <laughs> when you think about it? And he was, he was the teacher of prayer, right? The, the uh, original teacher, when you think about it, right? Oh, I just, this, this is, is a such phenomenal. a gift to me. Yes. Go ahead. There's a phenomenal book called The Yoga of Jesus. And it was something that I shared with my mom a long time ago. And then also another book that I'm really enjoying for my second time reading it called Jesus Lived in India. And when I did the motorcycle trip, I did two different trips in Northern India. And you see it's phenomenal because you're up where you don't have traffic. You don't have a lot of stores. You don't have a lot of things that have changed in the last few 500 yeah. years or so. And you have all sorts of monuments of Jesus was here. Jesus was here along different pathways. Um, people wear bumper stickers. Jesus loves you. I mean, that just surprised me in that area of India. Yeah. And it is, he absolutely, he, he was the teacher of a lot of this. This is the Kriya means an evolutionary action. He was there teaching, hey, don't be fooled by your mind. This is right. what I've come here to teach. And love it's, it. Yeah. It's available. So good. It's available. So, so, Matt, tell us um, 
what you have going on right now. I know you you did have a gift that you wanted to offer to our community. Tell us a little bit about that. And yes. we're just so happy that you're here with us. Thank you for your time. My my soul's purpose has always really been that of connecting with others to help them shine their light. I was a competitive figure skater, a competitive figure skating coach for 20 years. And I would say what I found made me an wonderful double axle teacher is that it wasn't about the double axle. It was what happened in school, what happened in the car right on the way there, what's going on at home. That's what prevented them from landing the double axle. So mm -hmm. I have taken that and I now work with entrepreneurs, a lot of solo entrepreneurs, especially the more you work alone, the more the sound of your own wheels make you crazy. And so I feel that my genius has now really started to shine in that shining that light on others where it they can see their genius. And so I really serve best those at a crossroads, mothers of teens, tweens, empty nesters, entrepreneurs saying, well, I did this my whole life. Now I want to switch gears and I guide them back to what's your number one pain point right now? What's this habit that you're being shipped? What's preventing you from being able to ship that habit? Why is that habit serving this? And what can we do that would be simple techniques? And using my ancient wisdom then from Ayurveda and all these other sciences in the last 10 years. Now I'm just kind of narrowing it to how can I serve you? So my gift is I would love to be on a call with each and every one of you. And it's a 20 minute call for or me to understand again, what's your belief system? What's your comfort zone? What's your number one I've, I'm managing my mind and here's my pain point. Here's my memory block. Here's my story. And I know it's a story, but I need somebody to help me disassemble that story. So I would love to be on a call with you. And I guarantee that I will give you at least one practice that will shift some aspect of what's going on within 24 to 48 hours. I love it. I love it. So good. I, I tell our community all the time. Thank you so much so much for your time. Um, I tell, I tell people all the time, one of your, one of your best wealth building skills that you can do is just take advantage of these beautiful gifts that our, our guests offer because so much wisdom, so much value. What, what did we say yesterday? The more wisdom you seek, the fewer miracles you're going to need in your life. Right? So, so my, thank you, my dear Thank you so much. You're, you're a blessing to us and all surround you. So we thank you for your time. Friends, um, let's remember, I wanted to um, share with you for uh, tomorrow. Um, make sure you're going to be have your challenge for today, should you accept, choose to accept it, is go out on social media and ask who needs health insurance. Um, you know, you now have a tool in your toolbox that if someone says yes, you can actually help them, right? There's so many funny memes out there that you can do on Google or, you know, funny things that you can come up with. And also your dream work today is to find out, you know, really what your asset class is looking like. Do you have a little more on the debt side, the asset, what, what how can we rebalance this? right? If, if you have more debt than assets, that's one of the reasons we're excited you're here because we're showing you how to build your assets, right? Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the be your own banker concept. We're also going to hear a little bit about my ex-husband's story about um, how I helped him. I, I'm an annoying ex-wife. Actually, I'm not. We're, we're very, very good friends, but we tease each other. Um, he was very happy that I kept bugging him about the ERC tax credit that his family got, about $130,000. So we're going to learn more about that tomorrow. June, I'm going to have you figure, let's see who our lucky winner is today. Go ahead and spin the dial. She always comes up with beautiful color combos. I love it. <laughs> who is our winner today? Miss Rona. Lucky Rona. Congratulations, my dear. <laughs> okay, everyone. Well, we're we're so happy you joined us today. We'll see you tomorrow. We have the incredible James Elroy Dixon, my friend tomorrow, who is um, actually an amputee 
survivor, um, incredible man of faith, just worked in the 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 car uh, plants of where is where uh, Sh Chicago? No, is it Chicago? Where's the where's all the car plants? What city is that? Michigan? I forget. He's been there forever and 40 years and then went out to become a motivational speaker and um, just has an incredible story of power and faith. So come and join us tomorrow, friends. We, we are, we're sticking with it. Those of you that have the stamina, you know, we started out, I think 70 people joined, signed up for this workshop this week. And I'm so proud of you that are sticking with it. So blessings, everyone, in this amazing life journey. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.